Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. This is a test career in which I'm trying to figure out what I need to fix with RP2000 and one of those things turned out to be real antennas. Uh, the problem was that even though we had unlocked uh, Engineering 101 here, it wasn't showing up with the upgrade, which we see here now because I fixed it. Uh, so there are supposed to be those upgrades and for some reason the tech tree level two isn't showing up, but at least level three is here. So the com tech level three is there, but com tech level two is supposed to be in this one. And I still can't figure out why it's not. Uh, but when I went into the configuration for real antennas putting itself into the tech tree, it seemed to be all right, but it did have two separate conditions. One for if there's RP zero and the other, if there's not. And the presumption being if there's RP0, it'd be using the old RP0 tech tree, which was modified from community tech tree or RP1's tech tree. But it seemed to be RP1's tech tree that I was looking at. But it shouldn't have read this install as an RP0 install. At least Realism Overhaul sure didn't, which is why when I tried to create a career with the most recent Realism Overhaul, it didn't work. We have to use the Realism Overhaul that's a little bit older, 17.4.1 and then we can make a career because the newer realism overhauls prevent you from making a career with, uh, without RP1. Uh, so realism overall did not read this as an RP0 slash RP1 install, but maybe, maybe real antennas was reading it that way. I don't know, it's, uh, it's a little bit weird, but the point was that I basically had to take out that condition and just tell it, look, just put yourself in the tech tree <laughs> Uh, in these positions, you know, the stockish community tech tree positions. And for the most part, it has done that. But for some reason, I'm missing tech level two, which is sort of important because that's the first one that can relay. Uh, and it's supposed to be in survivability. And it's not. So that's peculiar. I'm going to research survivability now, since we've got 15, and we might as well. So we've added that in. And we got the upgrade point. So, oh, no, I didn't want Eve. So I'm going to spend the upgrade point on speeding up our science because we sure do need that. But anyway, so that's one fix. I also tried to fix my own antennae for the small rockets pack so that they work with real antennas. And we'll see whether that works or not. We do have the lunar flyby contract. We can now pick up the successful reentry contract and because we just got the heat shield. And so I think we should do that. Why don't we just do a successful re-entry? Maybe we should do some upgrades in the meantime. So we'll work on that mission, but then we'll try to get patch conics visible on the map, and then it'll be easier to do the moon mission. Okay, but you know, that's that takes money though. Oh, we're unlocking though. Oh gosh, we don't actually have survivability yet. I picked up the contract too soon. Okay, yeah, no, we want survivability quickly. And hopefully the contract won't be out before we get survivability. Ooh, deadline 364 days. So, okay, um, I'm gonna get another upgrade point so that we speed up our R&D a little bit more. It'll give us enough time. Okay, so our tracking station upgrade is going to take 466 days. And I think that's tied to our upgrade points, a VAB upgrade points, I'm not sure. But I don't want to spend more for that. So we're sort of in a bind here. We, we can't quite do the survivability yet. We can't... I mean, I could try and fling things at the moon, but it won't be very reliable. It'll be like the previous episode. I can't do too much better than that. So... Well, unless we have better antennae. Hold on, hold on, hold on. If we can communicate to something all the way to the moon, then we can do it. Let's see. So, I did try and fix the little antennae that I had made. And now they have real antennae. Real antenna 2.0. O decibel thingamajig for the helix one. This relay one also has two, it looks like. Two. This Communitron 16 has three. 
I think this little one should have three, but anyway. Also, that one should be directed because it's, um, well, it's really small though. Extend antenna. See, it's a dish. Uh, anyway, I thought I had configured it as a dish, but... And then these are also antennae. Uh, they're, they're all for some reason two. I maybe need to figure out how to make it something other than two. But the Communitron 16 is three. So, and I remember that the Communitron 16 could communicate from the moon. So let's see if that's possible. Oh, we do have tech level one, so that's good. We, we have that unlocked. So that's also true. Actually, without Communitron 16, if it's tech level one, is that good enough? Uh, seems like the answer is no. So, no, this is not good enough. Let's just disable that one's antenna. This already has an antenna in it. We can probably reduce its capability since we only need it until we extend this one. Now, does this have enough? Still doesn't have enough. Nope, it can transmit, but it can't receive. And receiving is important. Oh wait, um, somehow it's giving me something different now. We've got some capability here. Okay, wait, let me try the Commutron 16 again. Maybe I didn't apply that antenna planning tech level correctly. Though actually the whip antenna would be better, probably. We just need the bare minimum to send commands with. 34? We could try the Whip Antenna instead, but I'll try the Communitron 16, it's traditional. Okay, so we should be able to communicate just barely with this through a DSN thing. Not all the tracking stations, it has to be one of the DSN tracking stations. And maybe that'll work out for us. We will go to the moon again, this time with comms. And taking full advantage of this ether engine which restarts. Alright, newly revamped Serenity mission. For some reason, the rollout always completes at night time for me. We're almost through our first year, we're on November 28th now. I think we've done pretty well for our first year. Still don't have patch conics, still don't have any idea where we're going to end up, but we're going to try to rely on the fact that we can correct this time. That one's still hanging out, the previous Serenity. Yeah, we'll, we'll be launching at night. So, I didn't make the technique clear before, I don't think, but you sort of angle it so that the moon's orbit is at its maximum angle, so if you so to see if I turn it like this and get the two sides of its orbit lined up. Well, here it's flat. What we want is it at its maximum angle. Right about there-ish. Seems like it. And you want the KSC to be where it's at its peak. Because when you think about it, what's going to happen when we launch is we're going to launch and we're going to, even though we're aim that 90 degrees, we're going to head southward towards the equator, right? That's what always happens. We go to the equator and go down. So we're going to be going down and basically one quarter of the way through the circumference of the Earth, we're going to be at the equator. And so we want the moon to be sort of in the same place you know, where it crosses Earth's equator. And that's what this does. So that's why we're launching at this time, which is at night. But it's certainly not accurate, I'm just eyeballing it. SAS on, throttle is up. And okay, it is reading my main throttle, so throttle is up. And ignition. And go. So far so good with the ignitions of the Reavers. We've only got 800 data units on it so far. I'll work on plumes a little bit later. I want to make sure that all the basics are working first. Like the real antenna thing. One downside to using the, the ether engine up there is that we're using Keralox, and so the oxygen will boil off. And maybe we won't have much 
ability to correct by the time we get to the moon. We saw that previously. Okay, first stage running out. Second stage. As they go. Bearings. Making sure to extend the antenna. And the solar panels, of course. Alright, next stage. And go. Okay, well, lopsided as usual until... I mean, I guess uh, the orbital... The surface info... Some of this, this info is probably available to me, but... Uh, I probably shouldn't know it, because the info is locked here. So I'm gonna keep the info hidden to me until this becomes unlocked. The info in particular, well, but it's a, it's a toss-up, because we do see the vertical speed here. The vertical speed is what I need. But that's one reason I haven't configured the extra windows. Because we don't have everything unlocked. And I still can't target the moon or anything. As far as our inclination is concerned, we're we're a little bit off. We ended up a uh, which one are we? <laughs> At least color my orbit line, darn it. Delta V wise we have enough. It's just a matter of comms and boil off. Around here should be a good time. We've picked up that station, which is good. Kano. That'll get us through the burn. I'll just burn prograde. Alright, that's the plan. Here we go. It did relight. Still can't see patch conics. Inclination is definitely off. Just make sure we extend like that. Okay. And then mid-course we're going to do a correction that will tilt it down. And hopefully we'll have an encounter, but it's tough to say right now. And we're gonna lose some RCS ports along the way. I don't know why I don't have comms, but we've lost all liquid oxygen, so we only have RCS to correct, and we pro that's probably not enough. And it's turning. So yeah, we, we might want a pressure-fed engine at the top. Uh, not pressure-fed engine, this is a pressure-fed engine. Uh, hypergolic engine at the top, even though this is more efficient because then it won't boil off on us. Or we could try to put insulation layers. I don't think we've unlocked MLI layers, though. Well, now I don't have power, so that's not going to work out for me. Not in this orientation. Okay, well, yeah, it's a bust. But I feel like I was lied to in the VAB as far as the antenna's capabilities are concerned. Because, oh, we did fly by the moon, though. <laughs> But we don't have any comms or power. So, yeah, something went wrong. Many RCS ports failed. I, I really, I still haven't adjusted that yet. I just want to see if we get comms, that's all. It doesn't seem like we're getting comms. And we would probably be in line of sight to some DSN. So, the Commutron 16 is not doing what it was supposed to do. So, okay, well... That's a little bit messed up. We'll we'll just stop that. And let's go back to the Space Center and see what we can do about that. We could just boost it, but it was tech level 1, right? Let's double check. It does take a lot of power, though. So, ground station planning. Oh, maybe the ground station isn't tech level 1. Ground station tech level 0. Planning is tech level 1. Okay, well, hold on. I mean, I guess we're doing that with the tracking station upgrade, right? Right? That's how we get the ground station upgrade, or is there some other way? Because there's only three upgrades like that. I don't know if the ground station upgrades actually catch or not. Okay, well, so it's because our ground station is in tech level 1. Hopefully the upgrade to the tracking station will make it tech level 1. And we can't do MLI layers yet, right? Oh, no, we can. We've got 10 MLI layers. Maybe that's enough. Well, 
Yeah, let's try 10, 10 MLI layers and see if that's going to be enough for our purposes. Yeah, we're trying it again. I wish this thing just had a max range indicator. 60,000... Okay, 100,000 is too much right now. It says 90,000 kilometers. With that much. But that's 164 watts. Which is a lot. I think I'm gonna try 52 watts here. 70,000 kilometers. Okay. And that's only good to a DSN. You know, I should give this photon interplanetary stage a better real antenna. So, the main change we're making is that we've had 10 MLI layers and we'll see if that helps us to do a mid-course correction that will allow this to hit the moon, or at least, you know, get within 5,000 kilometers of the moon. That's the goal. Let's try one more time. This is how they did it, right? They kept flinging little missions out there. Little pioneers and lunas and whatever. Of course, we're not in the 1960s, but that's basically what they're doing now, too. <laughs> uh, of course, they're mainly trying to land on it, which is more complicated. Well, I set the difficulty too hard, and this is reasonably hard for me so far. Ah, it finishes rolling out in daytime this time. Okay, good. We're still going to have to launch at night, I think. Okay, once more to the moon. Throttle up, SAS is on, ignition. And launch. One thing I don't have is a special ComSat payload and... Uh, sounding rockets payload kind of contracts from RP-0 and RP-1. I might consider trying to work those in. That's fairly simple. You just need to uh, create those kinds of resources in uh, community resource pack. Then make sure that the contract requires that resource. So it's not hard to do that. Uh, I just didn't copy that from RP-1 or RP-0. I don't know if people want those kinds of contracts though. They don't actually help you with comms, or anything. I guess we could have the sounding rocket payloads give you some bonus science. Though, the main problem is unlocking the science. Well, at least in hard mode. I mean, in the... Oh, we've got a thrust loss on the Reaver. Um, that's probably not a problem. It's specific impulse is fine, and we've got a thrust weight ratio of more than one, so that's okay. But, yeah. Uh, mainly we're currently money constrained more than anything else as far as getting upgrade points which limits our ability to unlock the, not unlock, but actually research the science. We can unlock the science pretty easily, I think. But our science is taking like years to research. Okay, staging. And fairings. Our orbit is too short to be able to tell right now. Maybe it's okay, maybe it's lined up with the moon, but it's really, really small right now. Okay, and go! I'll probably produce an O-scrap configuration adjustment as part of the RP-0 package that will reduce the failure rate on the RCS and of course eliminate its tendency to mess with the engines since I think the recommended engine uh, failure mod would be test light or test flight if you'd like either one okay so we are in orbit let's see what we can do here 
moon is over there. So we want to hit it over here somewhere. I feel like I'm more in line than the last time. Comwise, Tanana Reeve for Johannesburg might be in the right place. We have comms and we have power. But will we have power if we point prograde? I should put extra battery on this thing. Okay, well, I think we have to go now. Yep. Alright, go. Actually, there's plenty of slots in the CubeSat to put more batteries. The battery panel is this one, this silverish one. It has basically has a little silver foil on it. Well, it looks really, really in line with the moon, actually. But our timing is late. So we'll want to overburn so that the moon can catch up to us. And we only have communications up to like 70,000. Uh, well, we are above it a bit. Uh, okay, I'm gonna think that it's too much and get a little bit closer. We don't have a whole lot of kerosene and oxygen left. That's practically residuals levels. Oh, it only says 45 meters per second. I thought we had more than that, but okay. I can't imagine that we can aim it that well. But we're going to try. So far, boil off hasn't been bad. Oh, that's the end of that fuel. The rest is residuals. I don't want to use all the hydrazine. I think that's as close as we're going to get. And then I'm going to lock it on sun pointed. And then we're going to do some science here high over to Earth for once. Okay, we are sun pointed. And I'm going to roll stabilize. And science. Alright, yes, temperature scan we can transmit. And gravity scan. Only, I, I don't know if that's biome dependent, I didn't see that. And atmospheric pressure scan. I think it was biome dependent. Surface biome dependent, I mean. So, the gravity scan can give you a lot of signs still. It's sort of like still in stock, right? I mean, that's by intention. I don't know why it doesn't recharge. Oh, wait. Oh, oh scrap got the solar panels. Yeah, the solar panels got a short circuit. Great. Well, it got me in the end. Recover a craft from orbit got checked off. I don't know about that. Um, I'll make a note to review the successful re-entry criteria. We can't have possibly done that, right? <laughs> um, yeah, that's a peculiarity. Okay. I'll make sure to do it anyway. Let's see how close we get to the moon here. But we're not gonna have power. But we will not. We weren't gonna have comms anyway. Ah, uh, I went too far. Well, I mean, we still had a lunar flyby, just not close enough. Okay. We definitely need better DSN in order to make anything work around here. 350 days left to that, though. So the problem is we got the survivability thing done. The successful re-entry... Duh? Oh, this might be a repeat one. Um, let's see, archives. Successful re-entry, yeah. Um, they did do quite a few of those. It was all CIA stuff. Anyway, the uh, camera pods and stuff like that. Suborbital trajectory, land or splash down on Earth. It could have conceivably seen one of our stages as recovered. I mean, it should have, they should have been disposed of, right? Anyway, 
so I don't know about this business and why that got completed. Just reading it like this, I wouldn't think it should. And what it says here is basically what the contract configurator contract would have. Hmm. Okay, well, anyway, question mark on that. But we'll do that anyway, even though it's complete. And for that, we want to have survivability tech, which is in 121 days, and that was in enough time for the original contract. I won't pick up this other one until we do the, the one that we were supposed to have done already. I'll try and be honest about it like that. We do have some click science data from space around the moon and from the surface of the moon but that might be a little bit too premature right now i want to quickly see if i can get into this orbit probably not but let's check if our existing our existing launch the serenity launch can do this one and knock that out the key thing is the huge inclination change that's necessary and it's an inclination change that's relatively close to the surface. We could boost higher and then come back down, but... Um, well, we'll see. We'll see. Let's just try it out. It'll give us something to do while waiting for the upgrades and the science to unlock. Okay, doesn't particularly matter about our timing for this. Well, wait. Um, how specific was it? Oh, it does have a longitude of ascending node. Okay. It does matter. Uh, no, actually it doesn't matter too much. Because what we're going to do is... Well, we have to do such a huge inclination correction that it's not going to matter. Okay, yeah. Alright. Throttle up, SAS is on. And ignition. And launch. Can we do it? I don't know. I could certainly build a bigger rocket, like one with two reavers and stuff like that. For the moon, our issue isn't the size of the rocket though. It's more a matter of being able to see our orbits and being able to communicate with our mission. For this particular launch though, Depending on how much the inclination correction is going to take, I might have wanted a slightly bigger rocket. I probably didn't need the Communitron 16 on this one. Okay, staging. Bearings. Well, since we have it, we might as well use it. Okay, and staging and ignition. Okay, we're in orbit. Being lopsided in this case, I didn't mind too much uh, since we're on our way up. And that'll give us a better line of sight to certain comm stations, especially over here where I intend to do our burn. So right at that descending node there, which says 29 degrees, which is rough, uh, we want to go ahead and do the burn and we should pick up Kano there and that's just to lift our orbit up first to that ascending node maybe we can do some inclination here I think it's better not to bundle it in this burn I'm not sure because I can't plot it it's not that big a burn. It's not like going to geostationary orbit, so... I'm thinking we probably don't want to try that here. We're just going to 1,250, basically. Okay, well, that'll be a start. So, we're heading up to that ascending node, and then we have to do a awful... awful sort of correction. It doesn't seem like the commutatron is taking too much power. I'm gonna try and point at the sun, but we're going to be at nighttime. 
for the next burn, so that's not convenient. Ah, uh, we're losing too much power, I think. Uh, will we have enough power over here? Okay, well, it looks like we might. So, we want normal down. And I'm just gonna correct the inclination and see if we've got enough for that. We don't have a lot of time. Our power is running out. Okay, we've lost comms, we've lost power, and we didn't quite make it, but we actually got pretty close. And that's that. Okay, RCS is done. We haven't been very successful in this episode, uh, but I guess we've been getting data units. Uh, we still haven't gotten much data units on this engine. We've used the effort engine like crazy, and we've still only gotten uh, still in the three digit range as far as data units are concerned. Ignition failure rate is still rather high. Oh well. Anyway, yeah. I'll have to leave it here and hopefully with the upgrades and new technologies that we're going to be getting, we'll be able to do a little bit better next time. Maybe I'll just have to time warp to the tracking station upgrade before trying to move again. Let me just double check that contract to see. Oh no, it's a 64 day contract. We've got 64 days left. We have to rush on that one. What can we do? I didn't realize it was that soon. The failure is going to be horrible. Uh, hmm. Yeah, we can't wait for a tracking station upgrade, but we can't see our orbits properly. This only works if we actually have the tracking station upgrade. Well, I'm going to have to think about that. Yep, I'm going to have to think about what we're going to do. I didn't realize it was over so soon. I wonder which contract I was thinking of that actually gave us a lot of time. Oh, it was this one. The one that we just tried with the launch it into a specific orbit. That's a five-year contract. Okay, so we're going to have to figure out that flyby. Or, yeah, I, I don't think we could pick up enough contracts to make up for the fact that we fail that one. That's a pretty bad failure. So I'll look into that for next time. For now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.